We've been doing this for years. This is a brand new topic for me. I'm having a great deal of fun. We are here to discuss a paper from the Jack May 24th issue, and it's ultrasound enhancement of thrombolysis, or, and I love the term, sonothrombolysis. And it is ultrasound impulses enhance myocardial perfusion in patients with STEMI. This is great. Thomas R. Porter is the person I'm talking to at MD, Distinguished Chair of Cardiology at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. You know, I went on PubMed and I think there's 161 total papers if you Google or if you do a search on sonothrombolysis. But most of it is relating to stroke. Mm -hmm. So yes. let's go to the history first and before we talk about this uh, human experience. Right. What we discovered back in the late 90s was that ultrasound, uh, when it uh, is used for imaging, causes the microbials to grow and collapse. And that creates usually an ultrasound reflectance that we use for today what are referred to as ultrasound enhancing agents. Right. Uh, there's three of those approved in our country and around the world they are used to improve the uh, left ventricular uh, imaging capabilities of ultrasound. So they're used day in and day out for that. But that same diagnostic impulse that causes those microbubbles to grow and collapse can also, uh, if uh, increasing the energy just a little bit more, well, they'll grow and collapse to the point that they can disrupt uh, a blood clot. Uh, if they get inside of the blood clot, they, that growth and collapse causes it to crumble, if you will, into tiny little microparticles that are, are dissolved. Uh, and we thought that has a potential application, perhaps, uh, both at treating blood clots to the brain, stroke, as well as blood clots that form on top of plaque uh, that cause heart attacks. So what did you learn in the preclinical work? Well, we studied this first uh, in an animal model, uh, working in collaboration uh, with other sites uh, like uh, Bob Siegel at, you know, at Cedar sinai uh, to see if we could just break up a blood clot in, in an artery. And it turned out that ultrasound was capable of doing that. And we questioned whether that would be possible with a diagnostic ultrasound right. device, the same uh, instrument that we use to image patients. Could that, that uh, high energy impulse that we use typically to image the heart and, and look at blood flow to the heart muscle, could it break up a blood clot? And it turned out that yes, it could break up blood clots first in a canine model of a blood clot in, an, uh, in a dialysis graft, uh, which is a problem that we have today. But then we tested it in a pig model of, uh, of, of heart attack, where we made the pig uh, have uh, atherosclerosis, like humans get from high fat diets uh, and high blood pressure. Uh, and then we formed a, a blood clot in that uh, artery, causing what looked like just on an EKG, a typical heart attack, where you have the ST segment elevations on the electrocardiogram. Uh, and when we applied these diagnostic high mechanical, what we call mechanical index or high energy impulses, that cavitation of the microbubbles when applied intermittently, uh, we kind of wait for the microbubbles to enter into the clot, and then we applied that just over the chest wall of the pigs, uh, we were able to break up the blood clots in a majority of the pigs. Wow. First we did that by just using it with a low dose of what we call a fibrinolytic agent like tish, uh, tissue plasminogen activator. Uh, but then we tested it alone to see if it, it just in the absence of any kind of lytic agent could it break up a blood clot and it was successful for doing that. So we thought this should work yes, exactly. <laughs> in humans. Uh, and uh, so uh, we tried to get it approved here but the, the Food and Drug Administration wanted us to do an investigational device exemption so we're in the process of doing that. But other countries latched onto this very rapidly when they saw these animal studies. Uh, they said they applied to their governments to do right. initial clinical trials and Brazil was one of the first to do that. Uh, they asked me to come down and help them get that started. Uh, and so we went down there uh, and started doing this, uh, just using commercially available microbubbles uh, and a diagnostic ultrasound transducer uh, and applied these high energy impulses when the patients came into the emergency room with a heart attack. Uh, there's often a slight delay in that time period before they can get to the cardiac cath lab to have right. a stent put in. So during that time, we'd rush in there and apply the ultrasound over the chest wall when we saw the micro bubbles uh, uh, infusing into the heart muscle. And, and they still find a way to get there, even though there's a blood clot there, they still find little ways to channel through these blood clots. So when we image them uh, with the ultrasound, we use that same ultrasound device to apply a high energy impulse that we typically use for uh, looking at blood flow of the heart muscle, and it broke up the clot. Wow. 
So how many patients have you looked at? Well, we just have 30 patients in this first study because uh, the first uh, trial was primarily to make sure this is safe, it's not interfering right. with the, the door, what we call the door to dilation times uh, in the cath lab, and it clearly wasn't. Uh, but we also discovered that it was working too. Uh, so our initial safety trial turned out to show efficacy. And so we were very excited about that. Uh, and it turned out it didn't have to be any modification of the diagnostic ultrasound device. The same uh, diagnostic ultrasound device that we use for imaging uh, appeared to be effective. So this is actually being done kind of while the patient is waiting anyway? Yes, right. In other words, we're just, uh, the good thing about ultrasound is it's portable. Yes. And now, unfortunately for the first study, we still had to use the fairly large systems, but more and more, more ultrasounds becoming miniaturized. And we believe that we can get this on just little laptops uh, that uh, would go right by the bedside of the patient and apply these uh, what we call high mechanical index impulses to restore not only the blood flow in the, the blood vessel that clogged up with the, the blood clot, uh, but downstream from there, what we refer to as the microvasculature, uh, which is where a lot of this blood clot kind of showers down into that area and blocks those tiny little capillaries that provide the nutrients to the heart. If we don't get those blood clots taken care of, as well, uh, it doesn't matter what we do to the large vessel, uh, we will still get a big scar there. And ultrasound breaks those up as well. Uh, and so we have to apply this ultrasound not only before the stent, but right after the stent's put in, uh, when there's still a lot of those little tiny fragments of blood clots cl uh, blocking up the capillaries. So what do you think the future is going to be here in the United States? Is it going to take a few months or a couple of years? It, it appears just be, because of the way our system is set up, it's going to take a little longer. I think with help, uh, I would hope within a year we could start a clinical trial here. Uh, but countries like Canada, the Netherlands, and Brazil are, are moving forward with the uh, clinical trials now that this uh, safety data uh, is coming out. Sonothrombolysis. I, I love the phrase, I love the word, and uh, Please, I'd love to know what's going on when, when you do get more uh, data from more people. Yes, we're very excited about it. And like I said, the preliminary results look very good. And now is the time to really proceed. Well, you can read those results yourself in the May 24th issue of Jack uh, Porter et al. And please check for coverage of the ACC 16 meeting here on CardioSource World News, where I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.